So the New York Times is reporting that former Kansas Secretary of State Chris Kobach had a pretty incredible list of demands in the event that he accepts the so-called immigration czar position that President Trump is thinking about creating. So the list includes a jet available to Kobach 24 hours a day, walk-in privileges to the Oval Office, a security detail, salary parity with other top staffers, fair enough, the ability to represent the administration on all immigration matters, oh, and also an eventual promotion to Homeland Security Secretary. Uh, yeah, not so much. The position is largely seen as a workaround since the immigration czar would not require Senate confirmation. You may recall that Kobach ran for governor in Kansas which is a very conservative place as a Republican and lost to the Democrat in 2018. It is reported that he is considering running for the Senate seat there next year. And I say, grow, go, Chris, go. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. pretty, like, he, they actually well, I mean, published the fair, list of demands. Look at the list, like, with private the jet. jet. But no, the, the reason he wanted the jet was to go to the border once a week. I'm not saying it, it isn't a re little ridiculous. Okay, but how about DHS 24 Secretary? 7. I, I think Chris Kobach would be a great uh, DHS secretary. Apparently he's he one of the so too. he's one of the smartest people on immigration from the very beginning with the Trump. Don't I mean I yeah. cannot stand his views on immigration. I think he's a horrible, <laughs> horrible person, and his views are very scary. But it's, it's pretty um, pretty bold to step in with the oh and by the way you have to make me DHS secretary. Oh yeah, absolutely. It was obviously that the the White House who was somebody in the White House was not very happy with Chris and leaked it to make him look ridiculous, and they accomplished their goal. It so, worked. Yeah. What else? All right, so bee populations may be dwindling around the world, but one colony in southern Spain has the world buzzing. Hmm. Earlier this month, a couple in southern city of Granada discovered a large colony of 80,000, yes, you heard that correctly, oh 80,000 bees living in a hive behind a wall in their room. The couple had been hearing a troubling buzzing bedroom. for months, but as oh temperatures God. rose, the noise got worse. So they called a beehive relocation expert, Sergio Guero, to help. When he found the hive, Guerra was shocked that people were able to live in the house at all. Based on the size, he estimated the hive had called the house home sweet home for at least a couple of years. Guerra told a local newspaper that it took hours to extract all the bees from the wall before he could release them into the wild. That is uh, some nightmare stuff right there. I don't even, I mean, how did they like, live in that house? Like, that's some Stephen King that's insane. nightmarish insanity. Yeah, that's really gross. Yeah. <laughs> Glad everybody's okay. This past Saturday marked the 20th anniversary of a landmark cultural event that took over American pop music for the better part of a decade. Two decades ago today, Sagar, the Backstreet Boys released their third international album, Millennium, sparking the dawn of the boy band era of pop music. I take issue with that. I think the <laughs> new kids on the block sparked that era. <laughs> anyway, Millennium sold 1.13 million copies in its first week, setting a record for the time the album went on to sell 9.4 million copies back in 1999. That's the year I graduated from high school, BTW. Less than a year later, NSYNC would shatter the Backstreet Boys mark by selling 2.4 million copies of their sophomore effort, No Strings Attached, the week it was released. Great album. But we're not here to talk about NSYNC or 96 Degrees. I forgot about them. Wait, <laughs> I was thinking it was 98 Degrees. 96 yeah. Degrees? Oh, it's 98 it's Degrees. 98 yeah, that's degrees, what I right. thought. Or any of the other knockoffs that came to be in the Backstreet Boys' wake. We're here to talk about Nick and Kevin, and Brian, and AJ, and Howie in one of the greatest albums of all time. Millennium featured era-defining singles like Larger Than Life, Show Me the Meaning of Being Lonely, and arguably their greatest hit, I want it that way. It was terrible, I'm sorry. The album was certified platinum 13 times over and Sagar. Little known fact about me, hmm. when I was in Vegas recently, I went to the show, Backstreet Boys, it was awesome. I would go. I would it was, absolutely it was go. Super, for I real. Always, always thought it there was, was like, fun. I want it that away. I don't know. I think everybody does say it that way. It, it sounds like that on the album, right? Yeah, I guess yeah. so. Yeah. I don't know. For, oh, for real, though, the show was super yeah. fun because everybody was in on the joke. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, these guys are, you know, they're like 40. They've kind of yeah. got a little bit of like a dad bod thing mm -hmm. going on, but they're still working it. The right. fans are still loving it. It was it was awesome. That's like me when, I go, when I'm when i going to a next Blink-182 concert. Yes. It's like you're just reliving the past, but it's okay. I, I also yeah. saw Britney in Vegas, like, <laughs> back a few years back. Yeah. That was a little bit sadder, yeah, I must say. Sad. Backstreet Boys, though, go see them. They're amazing. Britney. 
So tomorrow on Rising, uh, the co-chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, Congresswoman Pramila J. Paul, discusses all the latest news in Congress, including the subpoena standoff. And California Democratic Congressman Ro Khanna, real thought leader among the progressives, he's going to talk about the growing movement to regulate major technology companies. He represents Silicon Valley, so that's going to be interesting. We will talk to you tomorrow. Have a fabulous day. See you tomorrow.